We're here at the Danone Conventional Center and we're at the Muscle Cars and Corvette Nationals. Please enjoy the next video. Well, yes, this is uh, this is the last Buick Grand National that was made. Uh, pretty much an icon of the 80s. Personally, um, as you see the car today, it's a good, it's a driver car. The paint is just beautiful on this car. It's just an awesome engine, Dick. <laughs> Drive those GM cars. Well, there is something I wanted to. They're coming out with that new ZR1 Corvette. Oh, the handling, the braking, the power is just phenomenal. The last car at the end of the line, culminating 64 years of automotive production at the plant, is truly a one-of-a-kind car. Wow. It's a drive, daily driver. We drive it all the time. Well, it sits very well. <laughs> but to get a convertible in this color was extremely hard to get. No, I'm teasing. I'm teasing. <laughs> we trailered it out here from Massachusetts. 18 hour ride. This is our wow. first time here at the Chicago show. with cars, I love them, enjoy them, and I guess I'll always do it till the day I die. <laughs> you won't see anything uh, that's this color, and I think that's what makes the car pop. Uh, the color is called Grabber Yellow. It was actually a special color for 69 Shelby, so uh, I spent seven years working on it and about 1,600 hours. And what you're looking at here, Paulette, is our tribute car to Carol Shelby. Welcome to U.S. Classic Muscle Cars. We're here at the Donald Lee Conventional Center and today I'm here with Phil. Hello, Phil. Hello. How are you today? I'm doing quite well. It's great to be here with you today. Thank you. Well, can you tell us a little bit about the car we have right behind us? I would love to. This is the last Chevrolet Camaro built at the plant that was the birthplace of the Chevrolet Camaro. The Norwood Assembly Plant in Norwood, Ohio. The Norwood, Ohio plant started out building the Camaro, which was classified in General Motors lingo as the F car, in 1967. And it was unique at Norwood because Norwood actually built the first pilot cars that actually prototyped the assembly process for the other plant, the sister plant in Van Nuys, as well as Norwood, to build the car, build it adequately, build it ergonomically, build it in a way that General Motors could turn the cars out about one car every one minute and four seconds. This particular car represents the end of the line, the actual end of the Camaro build at Norwood, the last car at the end of the line, culminating 64 years of automotive production at the plant. It's truly a one-of-a-kind car. Wow. Now, do you know how much horsepower this car has? This car has an LB9 305. It has a little over 200 horsepower and it's equipped with an automatic transmission. Nice. Now, can you tell us a little bit about the color of the paint? It's bright red. General Motors has a way of ending production runs with red. The last Norwood Camaro was red. The last Van Nuys Camaro was red. The last 2002 Camaro from St. Therese in Quebec was red. So they tend to end these productions with red. It's bright red, it's very fitting. It's a very flashy car. It's uh, livery on the inside is a, a gray custom cloth interior. Once again, works very well with the color combination. Now, did you happen to add any clear coat to this car? This car is replicated to the exact paint specifications at the plant. At the time the car was built, General Motors utilized the best-in-class paint process within the General Motors production chain. It was called a Rainsburg Turbo Bell, and it was a high solids enamel, base coat, clear coat. So this very much replicates the actual factory paint quality at Norwood in 1987 on August 26th, the last day of production, the day the car was built. Do you happen to know how many miles this car might have? This car has 140,000 original miles and it has one blemish on its Carfax. The odometer exceeds the mechanical limits. Other than that, the car is very clean. It's a very pristine car. Historically, 
it's just it's a wonderful car to be able to own and restore and it's it's just truly a piece of history have you done any restoration to it oh yes yes the car has been completely restored uh, the body the paint the interior the interior was especially challenging because the car itself you know, I've, res I've restored 69 Camaros, I've restored 70 era Camaros. This is a factor of probably six harder, a factor of six harder than a 69 Camaro to restore, simply because of parts availability. Uh, it's probably a factor of five harder than a 70 era Camaro because of parts availability again. If you're gonna restore a car like this, you're either looking at used excellent parts, new takeoff parts that have been carefully cared for, new old stock parts, or you're looking at hand replicating parts to an original specification. It's a very expensive process to do. The interior, for instance, in order to replicate it, I had to find the original interior from a company that's no longer in business that used to make the yardage for General Motors. I had to pay a lady in Florida Princess Dion with Lethal Interiors, a lot of money to make these seat covers for me, custom one-off seat covers, and then I had to pay another lady to hand embroider the Camaro stitching onto the seats to replicate the actual sew patterns that were used in 1987 because the, simply, the modern machines won't do that anymore. So extreme detail, extreme accuracy, costs big money. Is there any possible chance we can look at the interior? Anymore? Absolutely. So now we're getting the chance to look at the interior of the car. Okay, come on in and see the last car. That's the actual plaque that the uh, car was equipped with by General Motors when it was awarded to the winner of the employee raffle. And this is Mr. Dan Edwards. He's one of our Norwood ambassadors here today at the Muscle Car and Corvette Nationals. And he actually worked at the plant. And Dan has a unique story that's connected to the last car. And I'm going to turn this interview over to him. Hello, how are you doing today? Good, how are you? I'm doing pretty good. Now, can you tell us a little bit about why you're here today and why you have that camera? Yeah, here? Phil and I reconnected um, after he had, we had connected before he got the car or somewhere during the car. Um, I had, he had found out that I had pictures in a video of the last car. Um, what I did was, my dad worked there and I worked there, and when they did the employee drawing, uh, we all had a chance to win the car, so in hopes that I would win the car, I decided to document the car, um, the last car coming through with uh, photog still photography and video photography using my old uh, Magnavox VHS camcorder that I had gotten a couple years earlier. Um, so I documented the whole build of the last car. Um, ended up, my father got second to the car. Uh, we got a gold pocket watch, which is here today. Um, but after all these 30 plus years, Phil and I reconnected. And it was ironic, you know, that I had the pictures that he needed to help restore the car. I had the second place ticket in that. So uh, he used my pictures, digitized them, and I gave him my video uh, of the car. And he used that to help restore the vehicle. So you have quite a history with this car. Yeah, yeah, I've been a long time. It's been 30 years since I've seen it. So, but, uh, yeah, so it's pretty unique how it all came back together. Um, you know, that uh, we're, we were all in the drawing. I am get second, missed the car. He found the car, got back. So now we put it all back together. So. Yeah, that's right. All right. Well, thank you so much. Thank it was you. a pleasure. Thank you for letting us you know your story. Thank you very much. Okay. I'm here with dedicated workers that helped build this car right behind us. Now, they are going to tell us a little bit about what they did with the plant and what they did to create this car. Now, can you tell us a little bit about what you did to help? Uh, my name is Harold Worley. I worked for 27 years for General Motors until the plant shut down. I worked uh, assembly line. Uh, I worked repair, uh, inspection. So I've done about everything they had to do with General Motors when we built the Camaros. My name is Don Kissinger. I started at uh, Norwood as a hourly rate loading rail cars and I wor worked my way up to be a supervisor and I was a quality auditor where we had to audit 10 cars a day. 
I had seven people working for me, and we did squeak and rattles, and any defect we found on those 10 cars, we had a fix. So that was my job at the end of the plant when the plant shut down. So what's your name and what did you do with the plant? I'm Gail Maines. I was an absentee replacement. If somebody was off, I did their job. And the only reason I'm here is because Phil Bohr seen me on the front of the book. And uh, he got a hold of me and brought me here. I understand. My name is uh, Dan Wall. I was a general supervisor in financial. I uh, ran the payroll department in general accounting, did the financial reporting for the, for the division, and uh, made sure that these guys were paid properly every week. So that was a major chore. Millions of dollars. Hard-working employees. Nice, nice. Your name and what you do with the company? Uh, my name is Pete Knoll, and uh, I was in charge of dimensional control of the body, which included the windshield openings, the door openings, and the, and the back trunk openings. And if any of them were really wrong, we'd get water leaks, and so I was kind of responsible for all that. It was my job to make sure that they, those were all correct. All right. Well, thank you so much. Drive those GM cars. Drive those GM cars. <laughs> Drive those GM cars. You know what? you got to watch our video. <laughs> Don't forget to share and like our videos. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to share and like our videos. I'm taking a break. Please enjoy the next video.